Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here and I'm happy to be here. Today we're going to talk about a somewhat little known device called a psychrometer, sometimes known as a thermohygrometer. I've got my little example right here. And these guys are very important devices and from what I've seen in the field, underutilized devices. If you are going to be measuring your temperature drop on an air conditioning system, you need to know what the relative humidity is. And that's what this guy does. If you are going to be measuring superheat on a fixed metering device air conditioner, you need to know what your wet bulb is. And that's what this guy does. Wet bulb, psychrometer, what the heck is all this stuff? Stick around and I'm going to explain it to you. First of all, what in the heck is a psychrometer? Well, that's a great question. A psychrometer is a test instrument. It's kind of an outgrowth of a basic thermometer, except it has two actual thermometers in it. Back in the day, the psychrometer to have was this guy right here. This is called a sling psychrometer, and it's called a sling because it has a handle and it has a rotating part that you would literally sling around in the air. And on the rotating part are two glass thermometers. Here's one of them. You can see the little red uh, mercury bulb, not mercury anymore, but the red temperature fluid bulb at the bottom. On the opposite side, there's another thermometer exactly like it, except it has a sock on it, a cotton sock on top of the thermometer bulb. And inside of this little cap here, that little sock is wound up. And what you're supposed to do is pour water in here to get that cotton material wet so that one of the thermometer bulbs is dry and the other thermometer bulb is wet. And then you get two different temperatures, your dry bulb temperature and your wet bulb temperature. Not very common is a related product that uh, Field Piece used to offer. I don't know if they still do anymore, but it was a uh, two temperature probes with little clips on them so you could fasten them onto an air grill like this one is. And one of the temperature probes has a little cotton sock on it. You're supposed to get that wet. And the idea is that the uh, psychrometer will measure wet bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature. And then when you combine those two temperatures in a specific formula, it will tell you all kinds of important things about the properties of that air. And that is the key. The idea is that we want to measure the properties of the air that our air conditioner is conditioning. So this is inside air. This is the return air coming into the air handler, coming through the evaporator coil that the evaporator coil is being exposed to. We want to know the conditions of those that air so that we are able to understand if the performance of the air conditioning system is appropriate. Yeah, I, I kind of like to think of it this way. If you're looking at a, a pickup truck and you're watching it tow a trailer down the road or tow a trailer up a hill, right? Being able to tow a trailer up a hill at say 50 miles an hour isn't very useful information unless you know how much weight's on the trailer, right? If you don't know how big of a job the truck is doing as it's towing up the hill, it's very difficult to say, oh, that tow truck is towing really, really good, or that truck's not towing very, very good. You kind of have to know how much is how much weight it's hauling. On the air conditioner side of thing, the condition of the air that it's conditioning is like the weight in the trailer. You have to know what that is in order to analyze how good of a job is your air conditioner doing at conditioning that air. And the tool that we use to do that is a psychrometer. Now, like I said, originally psychrometers were actually wet bulb and dry, well, physically wet and physically dry thermometers. I want you to do a quick test with me here real quick. I do this all the time um, and I want you to do it too. Take your finger, stick it in your mouth. Hmm? Now you got a wet finger waving around in the air. And you'll notice that your finger starts to get cold. No big surprise there, right? Everybody knows that. But let me ask you this. Why does your finger get cold? <laughs> That's a good question. Why does your finger get cold? Well, the reason why your finger gets cold is because the moisture on your finger is evaporating into the surrounding air. 
right? You know that, right? And when things evaporate, they absorb heat. When moisture, water, refrigerant, when it evaporates, it absorbs heat and it's absorbing heat from your finger. Now here's the key. The speed at which the moisture on your finger evaporates is determined by the surrounding air and how much moisture it already has in it. Think of the air like a sponge. And if you take a sponge and you start taking a little eyedropper and you drop one drop at a time on that sponge, at some point in time, you are going to have that sponge completely saturated with water and it won't be able to hold another drop. And every drop that you put in, another droplet will come out. This is the analogy for relative humidity. When you put one drop of water on the sponge and one drop comes out, that is 100% saturated. That sponge cannot hold any more. Now, if you took that same sponge and made it twice as big with the same amount of water volume in it, now it can hold twice as much water, but it only has half as much as it can hold. That's 50% saturated. The drier the air is relative to the amount of moisture that it can hold, and there's the term relative humidity, the faster the water will evaporate on your finger and the colder your finger will get. That is the concept behind the wet bulb thermometer. By putting a moistened uh, thermometer into an airstream, the water evaporates off of that um, moistened uh, bulb at a specific rate, depending on what the relative humidity of the air is. And that leads to a wet bulb temperature. Combine wet bulb with dry bulb, and you can calculate relative humidity, you can calculate dew point, you can calculate enthalpy, you can calculate total water volume per pound of dry air, and a couple of other really interesting things. That comes from this field of study called psychrometrics. And psychrometrics generates a chart like this called the psychrometric chart. And if we were to use an example here, say uh, 80 degrees at, uh, of dry bulb temperature, which is down here on the bottom, and 67 degrees of wet bulb temperature, which is going to be up here somewhere, our wet bulb lines go at a diagonal and our dry bulb lines go up and down. So if I extend my 80 degree dry bulb upwards until it hits 67 degree wet bulb, I am boom, right there. And this curved line that I'm on, it represents relative humidity. That's 50% relative humidity. On the old sling psychrometer, like this guy up in here, there was a little chart here. And what you were supposed to do is uh, slide this back into the handle and line up the wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures, and it would tell you what the relative humidity was. So this is what we used to use to identify what's the dry bulb of the return air, the wet bulb of the return air, and the relative humidity of the return air. Well, fast forward to the modern era, and now we can use a digital instrument like this one. I had this instrument sitting by my desk for a couple of minutes, and it's telling me that the dry bulb temperature is 69 degrees, the wet bulb temperature is 53 degrees, and the relative humidity is 34% relative humidity. Now, if I know that uh, if, if I was measuring this in the return air duct of my air conditioning system, and I took that information and I plugged it into my superheat chart here for a 52 degree um, wet bulb, and if I had a 65 degree outdoor temperature, which is about what it is today, I would have to have about uh, six degrees of superheat on my air conditioner. So if my outdoor temp was 90 and my return air wet bulb was say uh, 68, I would have a 16 degree superheat that I'd be required to hit. So you need to know what your wet bulb temps are and of course your outdoor temps too in order to know what your proper superheat's going to be. At 35% relative humidity, I should be seeing a uh, temperature drop of somewhere between uh, 21 and 23 degrees, which would be perfectly normal under those conditions. So that's the value of having a psychrometer. And, you know, most of the time when I uh, poll groups of technicians, very few people actually have one of these. But you can see that it is actually crucial to be able to uh, do air conditioning work effectively and properly. Now, this one I really like. This one's made by Exitec, 
because it has an actual uh, dual input thermometer that I can use to measure temperature differences too. So this guy is pretty darn useful. Um, so where do you get a digital psychrometer? Well, there's a few places. True Tech Tools is an online retailer that serves the HVAC industry. And if you go to their website and type in psychrometer, you get a bunch of different uh, things coming up. Uh, this guy right here, the field piece, uh, what is that? The uh, PH, uh, PRH2 is probably one of the best values for digital psychrometers. It's about the size of a fancy fountain pen, fits in your pocket, and it's only about 75 bucks. This one's $73.10. I have um, used these in classes before, and I've seen other techs use them, and they're pretty darn good. The only disadvantage they have is they're kind of small, which makes them hard to read if your eyesight's getting to be a little advanced, like mine is getting to be. Testo, good source for these devices. Notice Testo calls it a thermohygrometer. It's the same thing. What you want to do is look for something that measures air temperature, relative humidity, dew point, wet bulb. That's what you need to know. Now, Fluke, of course, is the Mac Daddy of all psychrometers. They call it a temperature humidity meter. And this guy is very expensive. I think this guy is about 350 plus um, at a wholesaler. So definitely not inexpensive. I have seen these used. They are very nice. They are very accurate. I would hate to lose one, <laughs> which is why I've never bought one. I will generally lose one before I break it for sure. Amprobe is one of my favorite brands of test instruments, especially the ones that... Um, you just hate to spend money on. <laughs> and I, I, I think this is one of those. So these are good mid-range uh, devices. I have probably owned at least half a dozen Amprobe psychrometers over the years before I lose or break them. And uh, the, they are somewhat delicate instruments. They are easy to damage. Fieldpiece is really stepping up their game on the uh, psychrometer front. This induct diagnostic psychrometer is the cat's meow. This has more features than anything else. Plus it has the ability to deep inside of a duct. So you can do an actual traverse. One of the, um, one of the important things that wet bulb is used to measure is uh, actual heat removal performance of an operating air conditioning system so that you can identify, is this thing working up to proper specifications? Uh, this is important in uh, certain types of commissioning, certain types of lead commissioning, especially, and uh, high performance uh, contracting or uh, building performance contracting as it's called as well. You need to know that. Now, measuring the actual average wet bulb temperature of the supplier duct is not easy to do. Uh, with, assist, with one like this, it's almost impossible because depending on where in the duct you have that probe, your measurements will vary. So the best thing to do if you're doing that is to do a duct traverse. And as far as I know, this field piece instrument is the only one that can actually do a duct traverse using a deeper probe so that you take multiple measurements across the cross section of a duct and then average them all together. Yellow Jacket 2 has a psychrometer and the more you look at psychrometers, the more you might start to notice that some of them look an awful lot similar to one another. Does that Yellow Jacket one look like that? Yeah, it, it does. There's probably five or six of these on the market with different brand names on them. Uh, this one's X Attack, Yell Jacket is one, Reed Instruments is another, and uh, I forget the rest, uh, but hey, they're out there. Price wise, like I showed you, that field piece is down at that little pen style one, is about 70 bucks, all the way up to about 360 bucks for the uh, fluke. Somewhere in the middle is pretty, pretty common 120, 140 bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood is what you can expect to spend on one of these guys. Um, if you go to Amazon, if you go to Amazon.com, and uh, type in psychrometer or digital psychrometer or HVAC psychrometer, something like that. And it's not psychometer, it's psychrometer. It comes from psychrometrics, which we just talked about. 
If you go to Amazon, you are going to see a whole bunch of very similar looking, different branded uh, psychrometers that are Chinese in origin, uh, made in China. This one's made in China too. In fact, what isn't anymore, but th these have like Ming Sheng kind of names. I think that's one of the brand names. Um, they're really cheap. They're like 25, 30 bucks. Are they worth it? Better than nothing. Better than nothing. I have bought a couple of temperature instruments in similar circumstances and been pretty surprised by actually how good they were. I don't have any personal experience with the psychrometers that you'll find on Amazon, the really inexpensive ones. Uh, but I wouldn't say don't ever buy one. You know, if you if you really, I would rather you buy a cheap one like that than not use one at all. Let's put it that way. All right. So if you're like, man, I'm not going to buy a psychrometer until I can buy the fluke. Well, no, get yourself a cheap one now. And then maybe, um, something like this later on. I got this one in the discount bin at one of my uh, local wholesalers for a hundred bucks, which ain't bad. Cause I've seen it online now for 200. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, that is what a psychrometer is, what it does and when you need to use one. Hey, are you an air conditioning technician? If the answer is yes. You should have one of these. If you don't, you need one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Hey, if you are interested in HVAC topics and you would like to expand your knowledge and capabilities on what you do in the field, hey, go to my website at www.hvacservicementor.com and check it out. There are a bunch of really cool, more in-depth training classes, courses, and uh, so on there than we can do here on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you sign up on the email list. Every new sign up gets access to a free full length training course. So you can check it out and see what it's like. You got nothing to lose. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching folks. And I'll see you next time.